Well, Happy New Year. We are celebrating another trip around the sun. I, I tried to explain that to a three-year-old this week, and she acted like she understood, but I'm pretty sure she was thinking, Nana, you are crazy. <laughs> but here in church today begins the season of Epiphany. The Christ child is born. Somehow the divine mystery that is God is incarnate in the world, walking in this world with us, first as an infant and then a child, an adolescent learning how to adult, maturing into adulthood and becoming a prophet. So in the weeks ahead, as this season begins, we will walk that walk. We will make the transitions together with open hearts, looking for where this story resonates with our lives and our time and, and this year. But today, let's go ahead and celebrate that uh, trip around the sun. This is the first week of a new year and a new decade that's hard to even fathom. It's an opportunity, a socially constructed one as it may be, it's an opportunity to think about how we feel about the last year, what we hope for the next one. Howard Thurman said about the end of our Christmas celebrations and the beginning of a new year, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. Now, we usually use this time of year to make resolutions to change things that we don't like in our lives, maybe to get rid of bad habits, to read more, to eat less, to exercise more, to drink less. Those are all good resolutions to make each year. But I was thinking maybe here together, instead of making a New Year's resolution to change, what if we made our resolution to stay the same? Maybe our New Year's resolution should be to reaffirm what we are doing right. To commit ourselves to not let peer pressure, cultural conditions, or social media memes lead us to give up on what we know is true. Resolving to stay the same includes looking at who we are as a congregation as well as individuals, to looking at who we are as people who have come together around our faith, our faith that God is real and active in the world and in our lives. Now, our church covenant begins with this I think beautiful introduction, we are a congregation open to all persons who are seeking to know Jesus Christ as Lord, who desire to pattern their lives after the life and teaching of Jesus, and recognizing that we are all one in Christ, we affirm our equality in the family of God and in this congregation, regardless of social status, education, race, age, gender, sexual orientation, mental ability, physical ability, church office, or any other distinction. This is a way of saying that we are not together because we agree on a creed or any specific statement of beliefs. Rather, we recognize that we are all seeking to live our lives in relationship to God, as we are finding God to be revealed in Jesus Christ and in creation and in one another. Now, I believe this story that we just read from the Gospel of Matthew is important for our faith, and it's important for our identity as a congregation. So I want to look at it again. Here Jesus has answered the big question. He started with which is the greatest commandment? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then he spends a little time denouncing the religious leaders for making all sorts of rules and regulations that keep people out, even while they don't really follow them themselves. And finally, he concludes with this parable of the end of time 
When the Son of Man comes, all the nations will be gathered before him and will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And then the king will say to the sheep, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? For I was hungry and you gave me food and I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink and I was a stranger and you welcomed me and I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison. You came and you visited me. And then he says to the goats, you that are accursed, just depart from me, because when I was hungry, you didn't give me any food, and when I was thirsty, you gave me nothing. And when I was a stranger, you didn't welcome me. And when you saw me naked, you didn't give me any clothing, and when I was sick, you did not help, and when I was in prison, you didn't visit me. And they were confused. This is, this is one of those passages that I love and I hate. This is one of those passages that can be really inspiring and kind of scary. Part of me wants to say, yes, this is what it's all about. Feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, providing clothes and medicine for the needy. And I, I believe I'm doing that, so like I'm a sheep. And then there I start thinking about those times when I don't give money to people who ask, and, well, I do have a lot of clothes that I don't really want to give away, and I haven't been to visit the prison in a couple of years, so maybe I'm a goat. So I, I'm not sure I like this story anymore. I don't know. Now, it helps us in reading this to remember who Jesus was telling this story to. He was talking to people who thought they were God's people just because of where they were born, what family they were born into. They thought they were closer to God and better than others because they followed the law of Moses and because they judged other people when they didn't. They believed that people who were poor or sick or in prison were being punished by God for something they did. So to them, and, and maybe to us too, Jesus is saying, here is what God really cares about. How, how do you really love God? Not by running away from the poor and the needy and the sick and the prisoners. No, you find God right there with them and in them, with us and in us. There's, there's just something in this parable that makes us think more openly about our faith. In the parable of the sheep and the goats is Jesus' denial of privilege, spoken both to Jews as children of Abraham and to his followers who would become the Christian church. There is no distinction between people. Whether one is a child of Abraham, a Christian, a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Hindu, or still trying to figure it all out, there is no distinction being made about who God loves, about who should be the recipient of our love. So seeing in this light what matters is not our status, not our achievement, not our nationality, our church membership, but instead our willingness to let the life of God be lived through us in our actions that flow out of a love for God and for people. I think there's an, an interesting key in this story, and that's in the surprised response of the sheep. The sheep answered, well, Lord, when did we see you hungry or give you food and thirsty and give you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or gave you clothing? When did we see you sick or in prison? We don't understand. And the king answers, I tell you when you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The sheep had loved people just because they were people and equally worthy of love. The idea that they were doing this and also loving Jesus came to them as a surprise. The, the love was real. It wasn't a means to gain something for themselves or to enhance their relationship with God. They loved the people around them. The goats answer with the same surprise, not understanding what is being said. And it's not that the, 
the sheep are good people and the goats are the bad people. It's that the sheep were already living in the kingdom of God on earth. They were already acting as if this truth that we are all beloved children of God, equally deserving of love and a helping hand, was the way of the world. For we know it's the way of God. Ultimately, love expressed in action is what matters to God. And love is always participation in Christ's love, whether we label it that way or not. So this truth, this truth invites us to see and recognize the love of God wherever it happens. When it is happening even outside of our expectations, beyond our denominations or religion or nation, the love of God is alive and active in the world. So, I don't know about you, maybe some days you feel like a sheep. Some days you feel a little goat-like. The truth is that we are all good goats and bad sheep, but mostly we are all children of God. And the point of the story is that we are not supposed to try to figure out who is a goat and who is a sheep. Who is in or who is out, who is good or who is bad, that is not our job. We are called and committed to living each day as if that final day had already come. And the kingdom of God was fully here on earth as it is in heaven, the thing we pray for every Sunday. Acting and reacting as if each person was another person in need of God's love and care and a drink of water and a warm jacket and a visit from a friendly face. And I think that brings us back to that commitment of who we are as a congregation in this time and this place. This is what we believe to be true. This is what we commit to. Because there will be people in the year ahead who will say that God loves Christians more than non-Christians. There will be people who say that God loves one country more than another. There will be people who say that the poor are poor because they don't work as hard, so we don't have any responsibility to help them. There will be people who will say that the people who are in prison are there because they are bad people, so we don't have to help them. There will be people who will say we need to kill our enemies when we know that Jesus said to love our enemies. So this year, let's resolve to stay the same. I hope in your life that even as you may resolve to change some things, take some time to affirm and resolve the good things that you have done in the past year, the good that has been there, the good in the commitments that you have made in the past. This year, let's resolve to stay the same, to say no to the false beliefs, to continue to say yes to the God we meet in the stories and the teachings of Jesus. Let's resolve to continue to affirm that we are equally loved by God, equally gifted to minister to one another, equally called to share our lives, our resources, our words of encouragement, our time and our talents within this community, with those around us throughout the world. Jesus came and lived and died and rose again to make it clear to us that God so loved the whole world. And we are all, each, equally beloved children of God. And this is what we celebrate when we come together and we share in the Lord's Supper, the love of God given for us. So as we share in observing this Lord's Supper this morning, we remember that we are all equal, equally beloved children, children of the living God, made known in Christ, Christ who entered the world with us, with all our joys and pains, our stresses and our strains, to experience life as we live it. God incarnate in the world to heal our wounds, to lift us up, give us hope, Show us the power of love from the very depths of God's being. 
so that we might live our lives in relationship to one another as children of the one who has given us all life and love and hope for a better future and a new year. Let us prepare our hearts to take this meal together in prayer. Merciful God, we pray that you might bless this bread, this fruit of the vine, that it might be to us the body and blood of Christ, Christ who lived with abundant grace and loved without restraint, who allowed his life to be taken, who rose again to lift us out of our fears and self-concern into lives of love and service. Let this be to us Christ who lived and died so that we might shed all that is false and live into your eternal truth on earth as it is in heaven. Let this be to us Christ, filling us with the spirit of love, opening our hearts to the present moment and the future you hold out before us. So today we offer ourselves to you in this act of receiving the gift of your love. May we and all your people be made one in Christ Jesus. We pray in the name and the spirit of our Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs>